Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, hope everyone has had a good week, obviously. Um, I'm just going to wait like a minute or two for some people to come in, and then we'll, we'll get started with the Facebook Live today. I'm also going to just look over my notes really quick to know what we're going to be covering uh, today. That way I don't forget a lot of the key and important variables. Okay, so I see a few people have come in. Uh, Vince? Good to see you, man. As always, let me know what's new in your corner. And if you have any questions at all, at all, let me know. And for the listeners out there, actually, um, Vince is a former client of mine. So I think we finished like a month or two ago and we did a podcast together. So he had a very interesting story. Um, I forgot. I always forget the amount of weight he lost. Uh, I know I mentioned it like two weeks ago. Brent, good to see you. Uh, but basically he lost like around a hundred pounds on his own. And then we lost about like 30, 30 pounds or so together on that final finisher. It had a really interesting story of what led up to, um, I think he was almost like three to 400 pounds at one point and kind of the steps and sequences he took to, to get down to a normal weight. And I think, um, currently he's around 180 or 190 pounds. So from 400 ish pounds all the way to 180 to 90 pounds like a huge difference okay and so yeah he lost you just mentioned right now in the comment section he lost 200 pounds on his own and then uh 40 since july randy good to see you uh good to see you as well hope all is well hope your training is going well okay so guys uh we're going to cover a very 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 important topic today um i actually did a somewhat similar video like this last January, uh, touching on a couple of, uh, couple of the points in this group and hopefully, um, to help people in their new year's resolution goals, not only get to their goal, but actually create lasting change. So we will be focusing on fat loss as the primary topic here, but just know you could use these principles for any kind of health issue, be it like depression, gut issues, uh, cardiovascular issues, whatever, you name it, uh, it could be applied and you can see a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits from it. Okay. And it's, uh, I think it's like January 7th or January 8th already. And I already see a lot of people, especially in this group too, making the same, same old mistakes, uh, same old mistakes, like trying keto, trying all these gimmicky diets, um, now, don't get me wrong, keto, fasting, paleo, whatever, they all have a unique place and time. Uh, everything has a place and time. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of these diets aren't right for the people that are using them and implementing them. But the people that are using and implementing them are basically doing it to simplify their journey in order to kind of scapegoat, navigate, and avoid dealing with the real issues of what led to those health challenges and in our conversation today, what led to all that weight gain? And they they do meal prep services, they do three month challenges, whatever they can do to not deal with the real issue that's leading to that weight gain. Uh, so you have to remember, like we mentioned almost on every single podcast uh, or every single live rather, fat gain has to be, uh, Pre Scott, good to see you. Uh, fat gain has to be seen as a symptom. Okay, it's a symptom of poor lifestyle and nutritional choices. I'm not going to get into the etiology tree in this video today because I did that on so many other videos. So please check those out to kind of connect the dots of what we're talking about here. But you have to see fat gain as a symptom. It's, it's kind of like a pain teacher. It's your body's way of telling you like there's a lot of chronic inflammation going on. And that chronic inflammation is, is, is happening from somewhere. So most likely uh, chronic amount of mental and physical pain in a person's life that are typically tied back to the three variables we mentioned in many other other videos. But today we're going to be talking about specifically one of the variables to kind of have a bit more context and be a little bit more uh, razor sharp in our discussion. So what a lot of people, what what is the typical go around for people on New Year's Eve that want to lose weight, that want to achieve that ideal physique, ideal health, etc. They're like, well, it's very superficial. They're like, well, I just got to start working out and uh, eating a little bit better. Okay. And this sounds like very, very good on the surface. And really does sound like all you really need to do to achieve that. 
And don't get me wrong, like a lot of times when people approach it just from these two variables alone, they actually will lose, uh, let's say the 20 or 30 pounds they want to lose, they slim down their midsection. But you know, and you can look at this at Google, PubMed.gov, you will see what is a recurrent pattern. And any experienced dietitian will tell you this is, this is a very common problem, is people end up losing their weight or getting rid of their health challenge and you see them two, three, four years later, and they're even more overweight than ever before. And this happens like literally 80 to 90% of the time, the studies vary a little bit, but it's a, it's a very, very high relapse rate. And a lot of people in the nutrition community um, or definitely in, in the medical community are kind of, I feel a little bit too tied into like the symptom management approach. They're just trying to figure out like, hey, you know, uh, how could we make nutrition programs more sustainable, more flexible, more customized to the person? And all these things are great. Every uh, piece of the puzzle has a place and time in a person's fat loss or health journey, no doubt. But from my observation and typically from any cl clinical person with decent amount of clinical experience, it's just, it's very obvious. Lisa, good to see you. Thank you for joining in. Uh, it's very obvious, like one of, the, one of the biggest things that are negated, that are avoided, because they oftentimes require uh, a lot of change and a lot of effort and a lot of guts and a lot of, you know, dealing with fears on the, on the client's part, is no matter how successful they are, like typically what I find is a lot of people that don't achieve that lasting fat loss or a resolution of their health issues completely, meaning the health issue is dealt with while they're with the clinician, you know, be it a medical doctor or a nutritionist or a personal trainer. But then once they leave, it most always comes back. And then what's the point of what's the point of dealing with it in the begin uh, to begin with? Then you know, if just, just you get rid of it, and then there's another symptom or the same symptom that pops up a few years later, et cetera, et cetera. And there are many, many reasons of why this happened. And we covered many of them in past lives. So please check out those videos. Uh, but one thing we're gonna focus on today in this video is the fact that a lot of people just literally never ever change the environment that led them to have those issues to begin with. So obviously there's a belief system that led them into believing it's acceptable to be in an environment that doesn't facilitate health conscious choice as well. Uh, but today we're gonna be not talking about the belief system too much, but moreover, just focusing on the environment and how to identify toxic environments or environments that are not conducive to living a, a healthy life mentally or physically. And this is, the big, this is literally one of the biggest issues of why relapses is so high. So a lot of nutritionists or dietitians would, for example, say like, oh, you know, the, yeah, we lose weight, etc. But then it always comes back. I'm like, well, it always comes back because the person never left or always goes back to the environment that led to all those issues to begin with. Uh, one extreme example would be like, let's say a person finishes a drug rehab center. So they are addicted to drug ABC and it, it was successful. But guess what? They return back to, you know, the neighborhood where their friends that are still using drugs are there, uh, there are drugs in the neighborhood or, or something of that sort, or return back to a work environment where there's a lot of drug use, um, recreational. And of course, it's common sense to presume this person will relapse and become a drag at, uh, drug addict or have problems with drugs again. And uh, it increases the chance through the roof. I'm not saying it happens like literally 100% of the time, not 100% of the time, but it happens very, very often. Person finishes drug rehab center, they go back to the neighborhood where, uh, you know, their friends or whatever neighbors are still using drugs or they're drug dealers. They never dealt with the issues or the belief systems that led them to be tempted to use drugs. Of course, they're gonna use drugs again. Very, very similar to fat loss. Person loses 20 or 30 pounds with a dietitian, for example, they get rid of their gut issues. They maybe deal with some thyroid thing or some other hormonal issues going on, et cetera, et cetera. And they go right back to, to the work environment, to the family relations that are causing them insidious stress, for example. And they go right back to those patterns, right back to those poor eating habits, um, 
burning a candle on both ends, really depleting their central nervous system, their adrenal glands, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, two to three years later, they're 30 pounds overweight again, okay? And a lot of times people are like, well, you got to be more disciplined. You got to be tougher. And I don't agree. I don't agree. The bigger, the biggest thing that I would recommend is get rid of those stress stimuli that are causing you to, to feel tempted and stressed out. Because remember those sugar cravings, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they happen for a few reasons. But one of the reasons is your, your adrenal glands are just pumping out too much cortisol and because it's a limited supply, your body's trying to protect you from that. So it incentivizes you to eat sugar, sugar, processed foods, etc., which kind of bring down that, those adrenal glands a little bit, reduce that cortisol, limited supply of cortisol production. And you feel really good. Oftentimes, you guys know it, when you're stressed out, you eat some candy or some chocolate, and it does have a soothing, calming effect. Uh, and you feel good, but 30, 40 minutes later, because you never dealt with the stresses uh, or getting rid of them or changing them in some way, changing them significantly in some way, those stresses keep on recurring. You keep eating more and more, stress eating, and then you gain weight and then you stress out about the way you look now, the way you feel. And it's kind of like an insidious, like negative cycle that, that gets worse and worse year after year. Let me read uh, Vince's comment here. So in my drug addiction recovery, I had to demolish and rebuild every way of life. Vince, this is huge. And I would recommend once again, everyone in this group to check out the podcast I uh, or the live Facebook live I did with him. Um, if you have trouble finding that video, please do check it out. Uh, because oftentimes, one of, also one of the biggest mistakes people make in the New Year's is presuming they have to just change one little thing. Okay. Oh, I just have to decrease my carbs a little bit. Oh, I just have to get on this ketogenic 10 day challenge. Oh, I just have to go to the gym a little bit more. So usually, and I've been doing this for like 14, 15 years already, probably 15 years. I got to double check. Uh, when a person has, first of all, when a person struggles with body fat, let's just say unwanted body fat, here's the thing. Body fat is, is super easy to get rid of. Okay. Super easy, super, super easy. I've covered many, many ways in other lives of how to do this. Okay. It's super simple. Okay. So when a person struggles with getting rid of unwanted weight, this communicates to me that a person hasn't mastered at all the very basics and foundations of healthy living or understanding that they're human and biological system and how to operate that biological system. Yeah, because it's, 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 extremely, it's extremely easy to get rid of any amount of body fat, okay? And I'm not exaggerating it. They are real simple principles. And as long as you master these real simple principles, uh, you will see amazing change. It doesn't require like carb cycling. It doesn't require keto. It doesn't require the carnivore diet. It doesn't require any elaborate biohacking. Of course, once again, not trashing anything. Everything has a place in time, but it doesn't require any of those things. And in fact, all of the testimonials you guys see on the website posting here, I literally just have very, very basic principles with my clients and uh, they, they see those changes, okay? It doesn't require you to understand quantum physics to burn body fat. So when a person doesn't, isn't able to burn body fat, that communicates with me that they don't know what healthy eating is. They don't know how to operate or navigate their biological uh, system. Uh, they don't know how to hydrate properly or even what good food is. Uh, and also when um, you have unwanted weight, I, I also see people with unwanted body weight having various other issues because I do have them take the HAQ that I got from the Czech Institute, which gives me a good overview of all of their biological markers, their gut health, their adrenal health, their emotional state, musculoskeletal state, prostate health, et cetera, et cetera. And typically what you would see is... They have, uh, they're in the red, and red means bad in pretty much all categories, in almost every category, okay? And for example, if you look up on, you can find it at pubmed.gov, let me find it here, uh, a study called Prevalence of Optimal Metabolic Health in American Adults, uh, you will see the researchers um, uh, there showed that clearly 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy, unhealthy. Round it up. Let's round it up a little bit. Let's just say 90% are unhealthy. 
And the 10% that are healthy, once again, the standards they use to, to indicate that they are healthy were very low. And only, in my opinion, a great study, by the way, and only 10% of people match that category. So literally like 9 out of 10 Americans are metabolically unhealthy right now. And the bulk majority of them, sadly, don't even know they're, they're drenched and living in a, in a swamp of patho like mental and physical pathology because it's unfortunately been normalized, okay? It's been it's normal to be like very overweight now. In fact, people that are very overweight often don't even think they're overweight because a lot of the people working next to them are even more overweight. Uh, it's normal to be on a whole bunch of uh, pharmaceuticals, which have as many, which have even more side effects oftentimes than what they're, what they're actually trying to help you with. Brian, good to see you. Thanks for jumping in. Good to see you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's just become normal, okay? And, and it's, it's a sad reality, but it's, it's a reality that exists. And do you think, like, honestly, using common sense that just being on a ketogenic diet, getting lipo, doing some boot camp challenge, is that really going to solve those issues? It's not, okay? It's definitely not going to solve those issues. And what's going to happen is you're going to be running around in circles your whole entire life, spending money here, chasing symptoms there, and really not getting anywhere, just getting sicker and sicker and looking worse and worse and more aged and decayed year after year, okay? And nothing's gonna change. And um, you could check out that study I quoted or simply, once again, it's the weekend, and I say this often because it needs to be said, you can go outside literally anywhere in America. It happens to be super cold and rainy today here. And you will see that nine out of 10 Americans are, are full of obesity and disease and full of mental and physical pain and the sad part is, is they're okay with this. They're totally okay. And a lot of them are unconscious to it. Uh, just pathology, mental sickness has been in their family their whole entire life. So they're just like that and they just perceive it as the human state. But the human state is so much better than that, guys, okay? So we're talking about the environment. That's what happens. A lot of times, once again, like we go back, they went to a nutritionist, they went to a personal trainer, they lost their weight, but they literally never changed. They never got out of the environment that led to all of those issues, or they never dramatically changed that environment. They go back to the same hectic work schedule uh, that makes it almost impossible long-term to, to stay like mentally well, which leads to physical illness, stress eating, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and they never change that. And they wonder why they always regain their weight. And unfortunately, some, uh, I've heard people say, oh, it's just my genetics. It's not your genetics. It's, it's literally you. You're doing it to yourself. Uh, you're making yourself go back there. You're making yourself not have healthy boundaries with your boss or your coworkers. And you're doing it to yourself. Uh, and that's not a demeaning comment. The good news is, if you're doing it to yourself, uh, as my friend Brian Carroll told me, you can stop doing it to yourself. Uh, it's that simple. How much power is that? That's awesome. Like if you are causing your fat gain, if you're causing your health issues, which you are probably, you can stop doing it to yourself. And if you don't know how to, you got to reach out and hire like a good mentor. You don't have to hire them. You could always be your own mechanic. And I always advertise that, but just know that you have to put a lot of time into studying the subject to really come to a, to a final resolution, okay? So I would recommend reading at least like two or three books a month on that subject, um, finding credible figures in that area, possibly reaching out and still hiring them. That's what I do many times uh, for consultations. They're, they're expensive most of the time. A lot of them charge like a good personal trainer, in-person trainer, Expect to be paying like $175 an hour or more, okay? A good holistic coach, uh, really good like practitioner of any sort, oftentimes charges $500 an hour, $700, $900 an hour. There are some that charge $1,500 an hour. And this is off-putting for a lot of people. I understand. But just know that they will save you so much time and fast-track your effort a tremendous amount. And... What's more awesome than just being healthy and looking your best and feeling your best? A lot of times people spend like 2,000, 3,000. Trevor, hey, Trevor, good to see you, man. Let me know what's new in your corner. A lot of times people 
Um, I hear them say, oh, I can't afford like organic food, for example, or I can't afford hiring a coach. And then like two or three weeks later, I see them going on a $3,000 trip to Europe for like two weeks. And they're like, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. But then you see them return back to their normal life and uh, their body exudes like uh, physical and mental pain when you see them. Okay. A lot of times when a people, someone's like very overweight, very sick, um, healthy people don't look like that. Okay. That's all a symptom of uh, a lot of mental and physical pain in a person's life, whether they like to admit to it or not. So you guys, you have to evaluate your environment. You have to ask yourself like how health, how conducive to my mental and physical health is my environment. So Let's kind of break down uh, some kind of red flags uh, to look for in an environment. And I'll, I'll concentrate on corporate work today, but just know this can happen in any kind of field for the most part, okay? Uh, there are some fields that are more conducive to the way the human being has evolved to live, such as, for example, construction. You know, there's a lot of that dynamic, low intensity movement that a person just naturally has in the work itself. So they don't have to go out of their way to do that. They can kind of accomplish that in the work. But nonetheless, it's all of these things could be uh, could happen in any any occupation. Keep that in mind. But I'm going to be focusing on corporate work today. So uh, let's cover it just from one vantage point too. Okay. So let's let's look at the human central central nervous system. So the human central nervous system, first of all, uh, the Homo sapien, which is basically um, a version of the human like us has been around for about 200,000 years. But just know there have been many, many different human species around. There have been 28 plus different human species, and a lot of them have gone extinct. They're no longer around. The only one, uh, 28 plus, there are many new ones being discovered as well, but a lot of them has literally, literally just disappeared. Some of them were around for like a million years plus, like vanished, gone. Uh, Then the Neanderthal, which is a very close relative to us, uh, just kind of slightly more like muscular and built, uh, was around for around 200,000 years in the European area and then also vanished, just disappeared. Um, and then we have the Homo sapien, which is like actually a fairly new species. 200,000 years is, is really not that much time when you consider the Earth is about 4.5 billion years. Some people would argue even much older. And then the universe is around 11 to 12 billion years old. Some people would also argue that they're much older. So when you look in the grand scheme of things, the humans are, are pretty much brand new. Uh, they haven't been around very long in, in the in the way uh, we're around now in terms of the Homo sapien, okay? So pretty new. But if you kind of evaluate uh, particularly how humans lived and evolved to live uh, is basically just mainly as hunter-gatherers, okay? So farming didn't really, domestication of animals and crops didn't really happen until about 10,000 years ago or so. And that's when civilization started to form, okay? Uh, Basically, you have to look at it this way. You don't need, um, when you start domesticating crops, you know, this gives other hunter and gatherers the idea of like, well, I'll let them, you know, grow those crops, those animals, and then I'll kind of attack their village and steal that, okay? So in order to prevent that, then what do you need? You need walls, you know, and then you need a police department or like a military, for example, uh, then for a uh, military police department, you need a society to support that. Then you need laws. Then you need governing bodies. So you can see, like, basically, if you just get rid of the farming system, you can't have civilization as we know it today. Uh, humans would simply go back to hunter-gatherers again. So, and there are pluses and minuses to the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, pluses and minuses to being in a, in a civilized lifestyle as well. But if you look at how the central nervous system has evolved, and I'm getting a lot of this from uh, Dr. Sapolsky, which is a a stress researcher from Stanford, uh, very great content on stress physiology. He has a bunch of content on YouTube as well. One of his favorite books of mine is Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And you'll see that the human central nervous system has evolved to basically function uh, with Peaks of stress, like very fast peaks of stress, followed by valleys of literally nothing going on. And I have mentioned this in many other videos, but I'm going to mention it again today just to kind of reinforce the topic of what we're talking about right now. So what a good example would be like your tribe, just in short, I'm going to cut it short here. Your tribe goes hunting a mammoth. They kill that mammoth. It's very stressful, obviously, 
But then, uh, presuming, you know, it's winter, et cetera, et cetera, you can store the meat outside. You have nothing going on for like a month, two months until you run out of that food supply. I mean, they're doing basically what you guys would be doing on a two-week vacation. Uh, they're hanging out outside in nature, uh, under the sun all the time. Uh, they're fishing, hanging out with the tribe, like socializing, maybe repairing a small tent here and there. Bruce, good to see you. Uh, maybe rep repairing a small tent here and there, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just chilled and relaxed, okay? Uh, so you can see they had this peak in their central nervous system of stress, followed by a long valley of literally nothing going on. And that is how the, that is how the central nervous system has evolved to function optimally. However, in corporate work, because we're focusing on this, but once again, you can run into these patterns in a lot of other occupations, but I'm focusing on corporate work here because that's what a lot of people in this group do. So you could relate to what I'm trying to say. Uh, what ends up happening is basically you're on low grade chronic stress on full blast, like all the time. This is most people, not every single person, but most people followed combined with these uh, very high peaks of chronic, like very high intense stress. So look at the life of a hunter gatherer. They go hunt this animal. Then they're like sleeping in. They go to sleep with the rhythm of the sun because remember, you don't have electricity back then. So obviously, as the sun goes down, it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever been stuck in the wilderness without like a flashlight and when the sun disappeared, but it's like pitch black. You literally cannot see anything unless there's like a very full moon out Then obviously you can illuminate a little teeny bit, but it's still very hard to navigate around outside. And it's also... Uh, just very dangerous too because of the wild animals they have that uh, they have that advantage over you because back then you just had spears for the most part so you go to sleep you're sleeping with the rhythm of the sun uh you're once again waking up when your body's ready then you're hanging out uh with your tribe you have a small connection um not like artificial relationships like you see online for example or in the workplace oftentimes uh, and there's, there's just more meaning to the day to day because it's closely tied to your survival. So you're in tune with nature, you're in tune with the elements, you're in tune with how much food you have available in that specific area seasonally, you're in tune with the different seasons, you're in tune with the health of your tribe because you need them. It's obviously very tough to survive on your own, impossible actually, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, you guys get what I'm saying. But let's look at it. Let's look at today, you know, the average corporate worker. I mean, today, you know, you get up, you're probably not well rested already. You're already like exhausted. And um, you grab a sip of like non organic coffee, which has trace amounts of like 10, 15 different chemicals. Remember, coffee is grown with a tremendous amount of biocides, various uh, synthetic biocides, pesticides, fungicides, redemptocides, et cetera, et cetera, whatever happens to be in that area. You take that sip, the, the coffee spikes your cortisol more, but remember the cortisol is already like through the roof for most people or already extremely depleted. You get on the road, you're in traffic. Uh, a lot of times people don't know, but actually driving your car is, is very demanding on your central nervous system. You have to be very awake to make sure you stay within the lanes. You're watching all the cars, et cetera, et cetera. You get on the freeway, some people honk at you. That kind of that kind of alerts you, you know, that kind of spikes that low grade, low grade chronic stress again. But sometimes, you know, you get very close to car accidents, then it could actually be stressful. You get in a car accident, that's a lot of stress. Uh, you get to work. Um, oftentimes there's a coworker too that's extremely annoying. Uh, they cause a lot of stress. Let's say you're not getting along with your boss. That's full blown chronic stress right there. Uh, then you go have like a shitty fast food meal. They have um, uh, in industrial cooking oils that are drenched in the meat. So even if you pick like a very healthy item like sockeye salmon, it's cooked in these shitty oils, which causes gut distress oftentimes with people, uh, which causes more inflammation, more stress on the body. Um, go back to work. I mean, Vince, all my coworkers are <laughs> annoying. Yes, a lot of people are like that, unfortunately, but they just put up with it. And guys, just know that the more masks you wear, the more fake you are, the more stress that is on your central nervous system. So if you don't want to be in a place, if you don't want to be in a work environment and you're pretending to want to be there, 
or pretending to get along with this coworker, that coworker, or that boss, um, that's not going to work out long term. Okay. And we're going to get, that's not going to work out long term because it's going to wear you down. It's going to make you miserable. And then you're going to go disgruntled towards the workplace and you're going to make other people around you miserable, including your loved ones at home, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to that in a bit later of why that's important. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, bosses, um, they mean the best, but they just, they're not really good communicators. Okay. And they got a lot of problems going on on their own. Uh, in fact, when I tested a lot of, uh, managers or above in corporate environments with an HAQ, I mean, they had very high body fat percentages, um, a lot of gut dysbiosis, very high levels of anger and anxiety, usually combined with depression as well. A lot of musculoskeletal issues as well, like back pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they're not that mentally and physically healthy to begin with. Okay, and remember, uh, sick people can't make healthy decisions, or they wouldn't be sick to begin with. And a lot of these people in these environments are just very sick and totally unconscious to it. And uh, they're in charge of you. Okay, so obviously they're not going to make health conscious decisions in the environment. And that's going to affect your mental and physical health as well. It all interconnects, okay, guys? Everything is interdependent. Um, so all of this stuff is most people are going to ignore it, including the people on this call. I don't doubt it because it requires real change. But I'm happy that maybe one or two of you will actually take this to heart and create lasting change this year by focusing on many variables, one of these being making sure your environment is conducive to your mental and physical health. Because if it's not, you're spending so much time there, uh, it's basically like five days a week. Because if you count like driving to work, being at work, driving back from work, it's pretty much all day. Even if you have some hours available, you really don't have the energy to utilize those hours. And you're usually thinking about work, going to work, and then thinking about work, uh, driving back from work, uh, it's probably interfering with your sleep oftentimes as well. I see that very often. And so it really consumes your life. It really consumes your life. Now, if you're working part-time, let's say like 10, 15, 20 hours a week, then I think you can make it happen, even if it's not like super conducive. Although I would say still, in my opinion, it's not ideal. But most people aren't doing this. Like the average American works about 50 hours a week. So that's about eight hours a day, six days a week. And most often, most oftentimes, especially if they're middle manager or above, they're doing some random stuff even on their day off to get ready for the week or catch up with what they couldn't do on the week. Okay, so this is most people's reality, Mike, Victor, and you can't, um, at the end of the day, most people's central nervous system has not evolved to function that way. So if they continue to stay in that kind of environment, they will always have a life of mental and physical pain, which will lead to excessive fat gain and other various health issues. Okay. So, and I don't care like who you hire. I don't care if you have the best nutritionist in the world or the best personal trainer in the world, the best you can do from my observation, I have a lot of data to support this and you can find a lot of data on pubmed.gov of why America is getting sicker and sicker is just the environment needs to change. I don't care what kind of nutrition you're on or how much you use meditation as a form of medication like, think about it this way. A lot of times people are like, oh, I have such a stressful life, but I meditate. It's like, dude, have you ever thought of possibly just getting rid of the stress so you don't feel like you have to meditate so much? Just the thought, okay? Uh, that seems like a common sense approach to me. And I got this from Jator Pierre, this example. And a little five-year-old kid will understand this, but adults uh, are clueless. Let's say you have like a a rock stuck inside your shoe. So the common sense approach and a little child will understand this concept is to take the shoe off, take the rock out, put the shoe back in and then walk comfortably. What do educate, like quote unquote educated, and I use that word very loosely because um, very loosely, let's just say that. I'm not gonna continue with my train of thought there because I wanna keep it somewhat positive. They keep that rock inside your shoe, have pain and just take pain medication, painkillers. There's the ultimate symptom management approach. And um, that's literally what like 99% of Americans do when they have any kind of issue. And they wonder why they stay 
obese, sick, full of disease, misery, and pain. Because the only way to be healthy is to be healthy, like do healthy things. And um, if you don't know how to, that's okay. It's, you don't have to know everything, but you will need to reach out to like a mentor and hire them and ideally reach out to like a holistic, uh, holistic health coach and hire them. Because once again, you don't want to get stuck into symptom management uh, coaches as well. So if you have, you know, an environment that's causing excessive weight gain, hiring a personal trainer is great. Maybe because remember, if your adrenals are already blasted and fatigued, you're already exhausted, you already have like a lot of pain. Uh, training at that time is not ideal. You should be working in instead of working out. You should be dealing with correcting all those physical pathologies before you even step a second into an intense uh, performance-based workout. And honestly, like a lot of these beat down boot camp workouts are not appropriate for literally almost the whole population at this point. Like I mentioned, 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy. But on top of that, if you look under the hood into their HAQ scores, for example, a tremendous amount of have adrenal exhaustion, basically, okay? They're so exhausted and they're so worn out. Uh, they look many, many years older than they are. They have like hair loss, uh, premature hair loss, et cetera, et cetera. And then they get thrown into these super intense workouts. It's like, dude, uh, super intense workouts on top of that with minimal supervision. And a lot of times you have to understand that like very good, competent coaches don't have boot camps. They understand that each individual human is so different and their needs, their uh, needs are so complex that you can't, um, you can't provide really good service, uh, in a boot camp type environment when you have like 10, 15, 20 people, uh, they have to supervise all at once. So it's just, it's just impossible because there's so many variables to consider and to look at and to, to individualize. And a lot of times just with each new incoming client, like a bare minimum, I'll spend like two to three hours assessing this person, two to three hours assessing this person. Sometimes if they come in with a lot of issues, it could be actually longer. Okay but the average is about two or three hours for the entire assessment process. And for a lot of these uh, programs, you come in, they kind of do a quick Q and A, like, hey, what are you trying to achieve? Maybe have you fill out a waiver? And they're like, boom, get in the class. No, no, no. Ask and demand better service from that service provider, okay? Um, and just a lot of the trainers uh, that are really competent and good, uh, once again, will be, you know, charging that 150, 200 an hour, uh, but it's worth it. And it really will give you so much more benefit in your life, in my opinion, than going to Michael, good to see you, than going to um, even like a medical doctor and uh, getting hooked up on a bunch of drugs that are the ultimate symptom management strategy that really resolves uh it cures no issues, just manages the issue with medication. And then like two to three years later, you have three to four different side effects from that medication that you need medication for those side effects. And I don't know if you guys saw me post, but one of our group members is a nurse and uh, he sent me a picture of a typical client in, in the hospital. And this person has brought nearly like 20 different pharmaceutical drugs that they're taking all at once and they're still obese, full of misery and disease, and half of those pharmaceutical drugs are just to counter the side effects of the other half. And dude, that, that kind of practice is criminal. I really don't know why someone would go to medical school for so long just to practice that way. It's, it's, it's not right. That person deserves so much better care and definitely way more than a 10 to 15 minute assessment at the, at the doctor's office, okay? Because oftentimes that is what's required to really understand and get to the etiology of what is causing their obesity, what is causing their pain, what is causing their health issue. So you can come up with a realistic and solid solution for that specific person. And like I mentioned, nature is a novelty generator. So you won't see two of the same leaves on the same tree, okay? The same thing with people. There are no two exactly the same people. Uh, even twins are dramatically different. I have like a few friends uh, that are twins and um, they're dramatically different. 
okay? And uh, although they grew up in the same environment, same household, played sports oftentimes in the same exact team, all that stuff, had the same group of friends. Yeah, so Vince just mentioned, you know, his ADHD uh, medication caused him to be on two different blood pressure medications, okay? So as McGill would say, and I'm copying this line from him, there is no such thing as free lunch, okay? Wherever you gain in one area, you must always lose in another area. And you have to remember when you introduce some kind of medication in your body, it creates a ripple effect throughout your whole entire body, and who knows the changes that would occur long term from that? Um, even something, just something to consider from a lot of my research into farming and food production in the U.S. Uh, like as something as simple as synthetic fertilizer hasn't even been mastered. So they do have obviously MPK, which is a pretty popular synthetic fertilizer that they spray on crop or put on crops. And it does make the crops grow big, but the problem is it just fills them up with water, not actual nutrients. And about 99% of the, the synthetic fertilizers leached out into the soil and then which is causing the acidification of the ocean and the pollution of the river streams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of it, pretty much 99% of it is expelled. And if like these very high-end scientists haven't even mastered how to create something as simple, in my opinion, as fertilizer, imagine... Like, why are they doing messing with the human body, which is still an enigma? A lot of times people say, oh, yeah, it's not rocket science. But actually, it should be like, oh, it's not the human body or the human mind. Remember, like, scientists don't even know how human consciousness is formed. That is the base of, like, our per perceived reality. They don't even know how human consciousness is formed, okay? And now you're messing with the DNA of the, of the human body. It's like having a... Um, you know, a small kid does, doesn't even understand basic addition trying to do calculus, you know? So it's like, uh, take it at your own risk. But be honest with yourself. I know uh, some of you have been on medications for a long time. Just take a good look at yourself in the mirror this weekend and ask yourself honestly, like, have you gotten better? And honestly, the majority of the time people say, no, I've just gotten worse year after year. And I look the worst I've ever looked. Um, because the etiology and the issue of what led to that problem was never dealt with to begin with. And if you don't get to the etiology of a problem through long assessments, through doing a lot of research, it's not going to be resolved. I mean, unless it's a, a, because of dumb luck, sometimes dumb luck plays in your favor, but it's very rare and you definitely don't want to rely on, uh, on dumb luck because it usually most never works out long term. So, okay, so we covered that. Let's see what else we got going on here, okay? So prevalence of optimal, no. Yep, okay, cool. Okay, so where to go, where to go from here? So it is the new year. I touched on this many, uh, in many other videos, but here's one little quick um, practice you guys can do. Randy, I'm happy I'm not on any medications. Yep. Congrats, Randy. And with what you're doing with the program, I highly doubt, and the amount of effort you're putting into it, I highly doubt you'll probably be, have to even see a doctor ever again in your life, unless it's, of course, an emergency. And once again, that is, like I mentioned, everything has a place in time. I feel that's where the medical community really shines is during those emergency, like you break your leg, you break your arm, uh, you got to go to the doctors and they'll, they'll hopefully put you back together. But... Uh, unfortunately, the bulk majority of the time, um, I feel the medical community does a disservice because all that medication and all those symptom management practices, all they do is just allow the person to be the dummy they were that led them to all the issues they're having. Just continue that process over and over again. So I have started with trying to detox my home with no more bad over-the-counter products. Yeah, Michael, that's great. And we have like a lot of videos too on uh, sourcing high quality food. I'm not going to be covering that in this video today. I've been a guest on, um, thankful to be a guest on a lot of different podcasts. So please check those out. Uh, I give away, literally give away tremendous amount of free information that like a dietitian would, would just charge you hundreds of dollars per hour for just to tell you probably the same thing. 
because it's a passion of mine, I had trouble finding high quality food that my grandma in the biodynamic farm in Ukraine would feed me when I was growing up. And I found it almost comical of how difficult to almost impossible that's become to find in the US. So I did write a book, The Anti-Factory Farm Shopping Guide, um, which can be found on Amazon and Walmart. Uh, you guys can check that out and support me, it would be awesome. But the content in this page would also give you a huge overview, okay, and give you a lot of information that you could already take a lot of, um, a lot of action with and already see, see massive change, okay? So, um, changing the environment, okay. I go on tangents sometimes. Let's see what we got going on. So one little thing you guys can do, one little practice you guys can do this weekend that would really help set, set the base to lasting changes. You have to identify your, your core values. That's huge uh, because without that, you're kind of operating unconsciously throughout the day. And you're kind of just walking around in the forest with no light, no flashlight, and you're just like, you don't know which way to go. Is it to the left? Is it to the right? Am I like too far downstream? Am I too far upstream? Like how much more do I have to go? Am I going to run out of food, et cetera, et cetera. So the more clear your core values are, the more light you have and the more direction. And if you're like super, super clear with your core values, it's kind of like a GPS system. It makes it like that easy for you in terms of how to navigate and get to where you want to get. So uh, one thing I would recommend is just writing out like, a long list. Um, it could be just very small, insignificant things like I like the smell of this shampoo, or um, I like having my hair cut this way, or I like to wear this type of clothing because it makes me feel great. Or I, when I heard uh, even little things like, let's say you heard a song and it makes you feel really good. Okay, write that down. Over, you know, a few weeks or a few years of doing this, and it will be refined and it's in flux too. So keep that in mind you'll come up with a long list of things that make you happy and then you just do those things. Uh, that's what you want to do, okay? And it's, it's, it's really that simple. And like Walensky would say, or his mentor rather would say, I always have trouble pronouncing his name. Uh, the only way to find out uh, who you are is to first find out who you are not. So, uh, you know, be thankful for those relationships that didn't work out or that job that didn't work out because that's the universe telling you it's not a good fit. Take note on what isn't a good fit there. And then when you pursue your new journey, make sure you're not copying and pasting. Uh, because if, if you are, you're just going to end up like the sick masses. They're swimming in a swamp of pathology and they've totally normalized this, okay? You want to avoid being in that group, which is basically almost 90% of the population at this point, okay? Repeating patterns over and over again doing the ketogenic challenge now, doing some silly other thing later, um, doing some 30-day fat loss challenge, um, whatever. I mean, dude, it's endless. I can go on just speaking about hours and hours of the almost, I hate to say it, but like idiocy I see daily because people just don't want to take the responsibility and acknowledge and deal with the real issues that are causing their problems. They'll try their best and spend so much money and effort navigating around, avoiding the real problems, doing the ketogenic diet instead of getting rid of the environment that's causing them to be stressed out, that's causing them to, to, to stress eat. Uh, going to a chiropractor and popping their back once a week, paying $150 instead of learning good spine sparing movements and learning actually how to use the human body effectively to not surpass that biological tipping point. You know, um, taking pain medication for chronic headaches instead of evaluating like, why is that headache happening and solving it from there? Uh, I mean, so be it, man. If they wanna make these pharmaceutical companies rich and be on the 401k of their chiropractor and medical doctor so you can fund their kids' college education, then so be it. That's on you, okay? Just make sure you have a lot of money at store to pay all these guys. And the sad part is, is most of the time I see they're paying, 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 and just getting sicker and sicker and sicker year after year. Michael, yes. I kind of have a mixed feeling about that. Yes, they are kind of lazy, but no, they're not because 
they are devoting a lot of time and effort into avoiding the real issues. So they are putting in the effort, they are putting in the work, but they're avoiding the real issues. And because the real issues, unfortunately, will most likely tell them, if you want a resolution of these issues, you have to change who you are as a person. And that's scary for most people and daunting and very overwhelming. And that's why they never change. But if you don't, then just expect a life of sickness and don't be surprised. Uh, don't be surprised for it. Now, remember, 50% of Americans these days get cancer and half of those die from it, okay? So every other person basically on this call, as depressing as this sounds, I'm just going off averages, obviously, so please remember, is going to get cancer and then uh, half of those will die from it. So that's huge. Uh, that's huge, okay? I would be more worried about that than getting a COVID infection and dying from that, okay? Definitely. Uh, almost 800 to 900,000 Americans die from heart attacks every single year. That's like almost a million people. And that's so easy to avoid. I mean, insultingly easy, just through such minor lifestyle changes and nutrition changes can help you avoid having a heart attack. I mean, that's so easy. And the fact that 800 to 900,000 Americans die from that every single year uh, is a huge red flag that America is sick. They are sick. They are full of uh, physical and mental pain, full of pathology. I say this often, but it needs to be said. We cannot, um, we cannot find this acceptable anymore, okay? It cannot be acceptable anymore. It's not adding any value to your life. If anything, the only people profiting from it are the pharmaceutical industry and the medical community. And America is just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. And uh, now they're proposing this universal health care system thing. I don't even know what happened to that. I don't believe in it for this reason. Okay. It's super expensive. It's extremely symptom management. I would rather the government take a small portion of that money and basically fund a very thorough education program, elementary school through high school maybe even through college. I don't think the college part is necessary, but at least through high school and teach people about how to use movement as medicine. You know, the importance of nonviolent forms of communication, what organic food is and healthy eating actually is, uh, why it's important to identify and live out your core values and uh, stress management, how to identify toxic environments like we're talking about today all that stuff, that will get rid of the bulk majority of all the health issues America is facing today without the reliance on all these expensive drugs that have a tremendous amount of side effects. Like Vince just mentioned, ADHD medication um, resulted in him having to take two blood pressure medications just to counter that one. Yeah, Randy, that's what will create a real change. And then these kids that will eventually have kids will pass that knowledge down to their kids. Because remember, um, obese kids always have obese parents. You rarely, if ever, see a very like fit and mentally well parent have an obese child. Um, also, obese people have obese pets. You never see animals that are obese in, in the wild. If anything, they're like way too lean. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to eat wild game, but it's like pretty much you have to pressure cook it for like two hours to even have a chance of chewing at the meat because these, mus these uh, animals are so muscular. For example, compare a factory farm pig, which is very fat and can barely even move, to a, a wild hog, which is kind of basically where they originated from. The wild hogs are like super athletic. They can run super fast, they're super strong, um, they're very agile. They can cut like crazy. Their senses are like, they can spot you from like a mile away. Um, just to give you an example. Okay. Uh, so also don't, don't fall. I'm going off a little bit off track here, but don't think, um, like being healthy has to be complicated when you're already super sick. It might get a little bit complicated, but to actually be healthy and stay healthy, just remember hunter gatherers, um, they didn't have medical doctors. They didn't have 
personal trainers or Tony Robbins doing life coaching for them. They didn't have nutritionists or dietitians. And why are they? And common misconception is they died early, but really if you take out child mortality, they actually lived until their 50s, 60s, and 70s in full health, okay? Uh, the average age of death in America is 75 years old right now, but I would argue that people die way sooner uh, because you know, being in a elderly home where someone has to wipe your butt and carry you all over the place, I don't consider that living. Yes, your heart is still beating, no doubt, but I consider that already as, as dead, okay? And a lot of people, unfortunately, they, they die twice in their life. You know, they die when they're actually physically dead of old age or whatever, but they also die when they kind of give up on themselves and their dreams and core values because that's who you are. Your core values are who you are. And that is the responsibility in your life to be that person. Okay. And to find out who that person is. Uh, and that's where, that's where you want to, that's where you want to go. And that's kind of where I'm a little bit disgruntled with psychology. I obviously have a degree in psychology from the university of California, Irvine, but I kind of got away from academic psychology because it turned out to be, uh, once again, one of these fields where it's like very industrialized, meaning like psychology, at least why I got into it, was all about just finding out who you were deep down inside and being true to that person. Today, it's all about like, let's deal with your anxiety so that you can be a more productive worker so that you can make more money and you can move up the corporate ladder and you can have more friends. Let's, uh, you know, deal with subject A, B, whatever, so you can have more relationships and you could attract the person of your dreams. And so you can have more and more and more. It's like become very capitalist. Okay. Nothing against capitalism. I think capitalism is a great invention, but it shouldn't intrude in, into that subject in my opinion. So, um, so we covered a lot today. I'm going to kind of end it here. Um, it was great to see you guys. I'm just trying to take a look at my notes here. It was great to see you guys, but I hope that's what you guys focus on this year because that's what's going to create lasting change. And um, you will see once you master that part, like everything just falls into place. You don't have to work out as much. All of a sudden you have a lot of energy. You don't have to work out as much and your body still looks really good. Your digestive system works well. Your sleep is magnificent. Um, your sex drive is high. It just all falls into place, okay? So it is, it is a bit harder. It does require work, but also not living true to yourself is very difficult too, okay? And you have to, um, and you have to live with that 24-7. And deep down inside, you can only bullshit yourself for so long. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, but it was great to see everyone here. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, great to see all of you guys. Uh, have a great weekend, okay? And enjoy the rest of your week, coming up week, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.